Welcome back to the Watts Chapel in Guildford, where I'm with Sharon Hurst. She's cracking on with her watercolour now, speeding ahead, um, and I'm uh, doing a bit of drawing and doodling here at the chapel. Um, so Sharon, you've done quite a lot of demonstrating and stuff around the UK. Um, always interesting, you never get the same experience twice. You must have some funny stories from doing it, surely. <laughs> well. I travel and generally I'm with my mum. She is 82 years old and she's my roadie. Your roadie? She's oh, my wow. roadie. I think she must be a Guinness Book of Records here. So she travels with me, keeps me company. And the funniest story I think I can really tell you is the masking fluid debacle. Um, <laughs> Sounds good already. Always with an audience, I have two bottles of masking fluid. Now I use the yellow and I use the blue and mm. the yellow, you've got to use them for the right thing. Yeah. Yellow thicker, and as a general rule, I'll say to people, you've got to use this if you want it for thick work. And I take the lid off it, and I stand there with the audience, and I say to them, it doesn't come out, it's not fluid, it doesn't come out. And I do that, and flick it at the audience. Of course, everybody does this, mm -hmm. yeah? Yep. Well, this particular week, it'd been very hot. Two years ago, hot, hot, hot. And everything had stayed in the car because I'd done two demos, two days running. I got my stuff out and I stood there and the hall was full and I was mic'd and I was being filmed. And because it was so busy, mother was sitting next to me. She couldn't sit in the audience. So I took the yellow masking fluid out and I said, I don't want this for this particular job because it doesn't, it's not fluid enough. Took the lid off and something on my shoulder just said to me that day, don't do that today, don't do that today. And it's a good job I didn't. I took my masking fluid and I did it over mother instead, didn't I? So I'm talking to the audience and I'm doing this and saying, it doesn't come out, it doesn't come out. And what did it do? There was no. this noise, like that. <laughs> and a scream in the audience and mother was covered. It was running down her, right down her face, oh under no. her glasses, off her chin, onto her chest and all of her clothes. But the funniest thing was a gentleman from the audience came and grabbed her and ran her to the gentleman's toilets and drowned her. <laughs> but masking fluid doesn't come off, does it? It, doesn't, it just doesn't come off. She was covered. And she came out with all this, her hair like this, all down here like this. And a wet t-shirt competition couldn't oh have been Lord. better. Oh and Lord. all the way home in the car, she said, I only did my hair today. Oh, I only bless. did my hair this morning. And yes. is she still your roadie? Yes, she is. Oh, but, well. but I had to take her out and buy her a whole new set of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was drowned. Well, I don't feel quite so safe now. I think I might just no, move, my just chair move a bit or something, Sharon. <laughs> You're not using any today, are you? Um, no, no. Yes. But having said that, though, I am going to have a little play with salt. Salt? Yes, salt. So if we just take some, this is raw sienna and yeah. burnt umber, and with this, quite a wet wash, I want to run it over the areas that I've left quite blank here and then take a little bit of salt and dribble it. Okay. So come back up here, and I'm going to do that here. Now it's worth noting at this point that if you're going to use salt, when you've got your brush in your hand and you're picking up paint, if I go anywhere near the salt, I'll have to wash my palette afterwards. Okay. So what's this salt doing? What's it's the going to texture the paint and make it look old and sort of, ah, you know, weathered. Okay, right, I'm with you now. And I've not seen this before. Is this a, is this a well-known technique or is it something you it came is, across? No, it is really. I use it quite a bit because I paint in silk as well. And so I use um, salt on silk. It gives you some lovely effects. Hmm. So let's take a smaller brush. And I'm now going to come into, this is burnt umber, and just add a little bit of Payne's Grey. And I'm just wanting to texturise my salt a little more. And this is what I mean. When I go back to this now, I'm going to have to um, just give my palette a wash now. Because otherwise the salt is on the brush. And you will find, if you continue to paint, that the um, salt will affect the next washes that you put mm. on another picture. So there we go. So with that now, I'm going to lay it in the sunshine and we'll come back and we'll see what kind of effect we have. Okay, with that. great. Okay. So it looks to me like you've, like you've finished there, Sharon. Are you about ready to stop? Or? 
Well, I almost, bearing in mind that this is just a, a painting on plein air and I would take this home yeah. and I would use those colours now to paint a proper rendition of this, it, it's scruffy, but I need to remove the salt first. So we can do that with fingers, but actually I'm never quite sure about that because if you've got greasy fingers or if it's hot in the summer, so it is easier to and cleaner rag just to use towel. a rag. With a pen, I want to now just get my pen working. And what I would do, I would go around every single solitary line now and I would outline it. Okay. Because that's going to pull it all together and that will draw it out mm. and it will just make it all tight and neat. Well, fantastic. Well, I've, I've not got much work done. I've had such good time chatting <laughs> to you. I've only done a quick drawing, so I've been a bit lazy today, but I think they'll uh, let me off. But that's a, that's a really great image. We won't make you do every Thank line. You. We can do it. We can do another. Here's one I did earlier when you get home later, if you like. <laughs> Blue Peter again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so where's next then? Where do, you want to, where do you want to take me now? Well, we've sat here, we've worked here, and we've seen the chapel. So how about now going down to the gallery and seeing the man who inspired all this lovely work. Oh, okay. George Frederick Watts. Let's go and have a look at the gallery. Okay. So here you go, Fraser. What do you think of this? Fantastic. This is the Watts Gallery. A beautiful example of arts and crafts. Oh. <laughs> Hello again. It's Ryan. Hi. Do you have a sister <laughs> at the chapel or is it? Twins, I think. <laughs> so welcome to the gallery. I want to be able to take you inside and give you an opportunity to have a good oh, look lovely. around the Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we do fabulous. that? Yeah, fabulous. Thank you. Oh, look at this. What a great, what a great space. Yeah, we were extremely fortunate. Um, in 2011, we had reopened uh, after a full restoration that was um, mainly funded by the Heritage Water Fund. Yeah. And it ensured that we could not only care for the entire collection of almost 400 paintings, we have 4,500 4, photographs, 800 oh drawings, it's extensive. Huge. But it meant we could also create temporary exhibition space and have works on loan from other collections. Predominantly Watts works. Yes, all Watts works except the temporary exhibition space, yeah. But there are actually two that I'd like to show you now. Oh, great, yes. Oh, we'll follow you. So this is the first painting I wanted to show yeah. you. This is the self-portrait by Watts. He's about 36 here, and we've only just recently acquired it at auction, and we're still fundraising for it at the moment. Watts is portraying himself in Venetian robes, either as a senator or a lawyer. But what's really important for us is that this is actually hung outside his studio at Little Holland House in London. And this is what visitors would have seen before he'd even, they'd even access yeah. his studio. Is it letting them know who's boss? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So the second painting I wanted to show you is just down here. Okay. Right. right. So um, oh, this I looks like a bit otherworldly. Yes, yeah. So this is Hope. This is one of Watts' most iconic paintings. It, he painted it a few times, but he actually noted in his um, messages with Mary that he was actually slightly sick of painting it because this is the original version, but the other versions were painted based on commission because it was so popular. It shows a girl with, in a sense of despair, she's very isolated on top of this sphere. She's very desolate on, on this landscape and there is nothing really standing out mm, that will give a, a sense of It's quite hope. a melancholy scene, it isn't really it? It really is. So actually, one of the previous curator actually nicknamed it despair. But the point of the painting is that Watts wanted to project this sense of hope to anyone, anyone should be able to relate to it, regardless of their experience of life. Yeah. And Sharon, have you ever sort of introduced any of these elements of what's into your own work, or do you come here to sort of get ideas for compositions, perhaps? No, I have really, because I, I do like to put a little bit of so, a, a je ne sais quoi in a painting. Yeah. Something that makes somebody feel maybe sometimes not very comfortable, just to look at it a bit harder, to, to try mm. and understand the meaning of the picture and this is what this man does it, and he does it brilliantly doesn't he? So there is one other thing I want to show you which is part of our extensive sculpture collection and that is physical energy so if you just follow me. Oh lead on. So this is our sculpture gallery and this is just physical energy over here. Okay. Oh, hang on a bit. I, I, rec I recognise this guy. Yeah. This is Tennyson, isn't it? Yes. We yes. have the well, a, a version of at Lincoln Cathedral yes, where I live. The completed bronze is at Lincoln. 
This is physical energy. So Watts actually was uh, quite advanced in sculpting. He went uh, into it a lot later in his life compared to painting. But he wanted to represent the physical energy of man at, uh, within the cosmos. And this is how he felt best to represent it. And it's one of, as you can see, the largest items in our collection. Mm -hmm. It's made out of gesso, which is an extremely malleable material of basically plaster of Paris, hemp, horse hair, mm. things that he could um, chip away at, basically okay. add it's to very again. physical yeah. sculpture, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's not, not really got hands on. Stuff, no, exactly. Real. As Watts kept building it and kept growing, Watts needed to put more structural support in it. Mm -hmm. Originally, it did used to be wheeled out, but fortunately, for conservation reasons, we can't do that today. Yeah, I was going to say, what are the sort of runners and Yeah, tracks? Um, he was known to actually work on it outside yeah. um, when it was at his London home. It's so large. So... I, it fills the space, doesn't it? Not it really just does. physically, but you can feel the energy, can't yeah. you? Yeah. The movement. But it's great it's for wonderful. our visitors because yes. you know, it's the yeah. first thing they see yeah. when they come onto site. Yes, and of the course, first, through the doors. And it you know, takes your breath yeah. away as you walk through the door. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing us not, not only problem. around the chapel, but mm. also the Watts Gallery. That's not you are a, a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> Incredible. Well, well, thank you very, you very both. much. And you too. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Bye bye. Well, I think I could have spent all day there, Sharon. It's a, an know, amazing place. I know, Not enough time, really, was no, it? No, no, it's hard fitting all these things in as well as doing some artwork. But, uh, yes. Uh, pleased with what you did today? Yeah, very much so, actually. I'm going to go home and I'm going to sit down and really turn that into a proper studio piece. How about you? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always great to come to new places. So, you know, I always go away after and mull them over and, you know... You've got material here yeah, that you think and, that you could uh, use Yeah, and future. then I'll be on the road again. So, oh, thank yeah. you. It's been a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. I've loved coming out. It's brilliant. Thank you very much for uh, coming and joining us here. Okay. Well, join us next time on Fraser and Friends, where I'll be meeting another artist um, and going to another part of the country to see what inspires them. Can I come? <laughs> no, no, you've got to stay in Guildford. <laughs>